Hi everyone, today I'm going to be working on a piece of concept art for my, for Riley's story. Um, this piece started in my sketchbook and it's some idea exploration that you can kind of see off to the left here. Um, then the final sketch using blue cola erase pencils and then the final line art with a uh, graphite pencil in the B hardness range. I particularly like working this way because it allows me to be a little freer with my uh, line art than I would typically be digitally. Though that has changed and starting to use the iPad for my digital artwork versus using a uh, typical Wacom or a traditional Wacom tablet. I find that I do like drawing on the screen a little bit more than I thought I would. The cold erase pencils are nice because whenever you go to take this and scan it into the computer or to take a picture of it, it's really easy to eliminate all your construction lines at that point. So you do have to make sure to keep a very sharp pencil, which is one thing that whenever you are lining digitally you don't have to worry about because your pencil is always sharp. I also was able to go in and do some initial shade shading and some more fine details with the pencil to really figure out what I wanted this piece to look like whenever I imported it into my uh, iPad for the final line art and the final uh, coloring and everything. I typically find that when working traditionally, I am more likely to go uh, to stick with my line art than if I'm working digitally. And this is because you have less of an ability to delete the lines you do not like, so I find that I'm faster traditionally than I am digitally. And here I took a black colored pencil to really darken up the lines that would need more line weight. Again, using it to kind of firm up where I was going to want shadows to be. So originally, I was going to be using this line art for my final uh, piece. And after that, I imported it into Procreate. And then I was able to also edit some of the proportions and things like that. But after I flipped it, I discovered her head was way too large, so you saw I moved things down a little bit there. At this stage, I'm just blocking in local color. I typically do all one color first, and then set that layer to alpha lock, so that way I can color in and shade without worrying about going outside the lines, as it were. Using the Nico Roll brush in Procreate for this, typically I would do it with a hard airbrush tool though. 
I personally find that the coverage is a little bit better. I'm picking colors from a referenced from her reference sheet right now. This is where I about where I decided that I was going to have to go back in and redo the line art or the line work in Procreate because I wasn't liking how uh, blurred things were looking at this stage. This would have been different if I had scanned the piece in or taken a picture of it using my digital camera versus the camera on my iPhone to do it. I just wasn't able to capture the finer details of the line art. And I really noticed that whenever I went to go in and do the on her bracers. So this does come back to bite me later that I did all of the local color before doing the line art. Typically when doing line art digitally, I like to use the studio pin on Procreate. I find that it has hard enough edges, especially at the sizes that I like to work. And it looks good both lo both in a larger size and a smaller size. I like to do line art with lots of different weights. I feel that it gives the piece more dimension and more depth that way. You can also see here that I zoom in and out quite a bit, and this is to check the piece from the distance that it'll be viewed. So if you're working traditionally, it's important to always step back and view your piece at the distance and the distance at which it's going to be viewed. This is also true digitally that you want to zoom out to see what the piece looks like as a whole versus being up close, because that can change things. Now this is of course very sped up. I think we're at almost 12 times the speed that I am actually working. You can see here I flipped the canvas so that way I could adjust some little things that I didn't like. And then I'm going back in and adding some weight to the line art to give it more dimension yet again. And to add in some little details here and there. I find that typically if I'm worried about a piece looking too stagnant, that adding line weight can sometimes help to add some more character back to that piece. Now you can see what I said earlier about the doing local color before doing my final line art coming back to bite me. I had to do a lot of correcting at this stage. Because I mean, as I say, once I moved the line art around, things weren't in the lines anymore. It was also at this stage that I added in details like the links on the chain, how her hair was, how her fur was going to lie, and things like the corks on the bottles and stuff like that.
This is also the stage that if I needed to correct the color on something that I did as well. At this point I had switched it back to my hard airbrush because I wasn't liking the way that the color was being laid down with that Nico roll brush. And see here, this is where I decided I did not like the color that I had chosen for the Phoenix and went ahead and changed it. I felt like it was looking a little bit too much like ketchup and mustard, which is something I always struggle with when doing fire uh, inspired palettes is that things start to look like ketchup and mustard. Even back on the, to the days whenever I was painting leather masks, I had a fire, I had a red wolf design and the coloration ended up looking like ketchup and mustard for the first and I ended up repainting the entire thing. Now at this stage I chose my background. This is a picture that I took whenever I was in Glacier last year and it's important to have reference especially for things that you struggle with. And one of the things that I struggle with is making mountains look like mountains so I wanted to make sure I had a really good reference photo for that. Laying in clouds. It's also important to use lots of different brushes because you don't want your clouds to still look too regular. And I try not to rely on the reference too much. I use it for picking out colors since it is also the color palette that I wanted. And pop back and look at it but then try to utilize what I'm seeing from memory. Luckily for that particular mountain way out there too, it's going to be blending in a lot with the sky, so it doesn't need to be too precise. And you see sometimes I didn't choose directly from the picture, I chose what looked best with the colors I had there. And mixed them all together to create the color that I wanted. I often like to block in color really fast and utilize smudging brushes to create the texture that I like. Here I'm actually once again grabbing some color from the actual reference photo versus picking it out on my own. And since this mountain in particular is much closer to the foreground, I'm going to be utilizing the reference a little bit more because it's important that it looks like a mountain. It's also a good time to note that you don't, all, you don't have to draw all the individual trees or all the individual branches, especially for something this far out. You just want to give the impression that there's trees there. And while I did use a tree brush, it's so small at this point that I was just dropping in a few to create the illusion that, that there's more trees there. Now once I got into the foreground, I once again laid in a bunch of local color, utilizing many different brushes to create enough texture there. In this case, I did use a tree brush. I found a uh, tree brush package that I particularly like. Did you notice I grabbed different ones, I grabbed different colors, all to create that layered effect. There's lots of trees there. And then I did go in and add in a little bit of detail on my own. In this case, and for the painting, I actually have an idea, I actually feel as though that background is further away, so I didn't do as much detail because it is further away than uh, the cliff that she's standing on. You can see right there I actually added in a light blue layer and set the opacity level down so that way it pushed the background mountains even further away. Atmospheric perspective, yo! Now I'm doing the foreground, and in this case I wanted the foreground to look a little more 
stylized in the background to kind of ground Rhea into the piece a little bit more. I'm also using pieces like this to try to explore how I will do the comic that she's a character in. It's important to find a workflow, especially for something as massive as a ongoing webcomic. see here how many different brushes I will use to create the effect that I like. Cliff faces are also something I struggle with and I particularly like the way that this one turned out. I didn't get too obsessed with making it look realistic because that wasn't the point. It was supposed to look a little bit stylized and I remembered that and stuck to that theme as I was working. Here I'm just cleaning up the line art. And now I throw in some shadows. So I chose a cool shadow here because my light is going to be warm. And she's also being lit from behind, so a lot more of her is going to be in shadow than like if the light was coming from the front. When I do a shadow layer, when I do a shadow, when I, when I do shadows, I will put the color on a different layer than on than the uh, local color and set that layer to multiply. Then from that point, I can erase, blur, I can erase, smudge, add more as I desire without messing up my local color. You can see here I'm actually erasing out areas where light would be bouncing and curving around her. And then using the brush to smudge out the edges so that way things look a little softer. Now I'm going in and putting in areas where the light would be com closer to completely blocked from an area or where the shadows are deeper as it were. Another reason to put your shadows on a different layer is that if you decide, if you mess up royally, all you have to do is delete that layer and you can start over, but you don't have to start over from the very beginning. One of my favorite things to work on in any piece is the hair. And I'm still looking for the exact way that I want the style of the hair to look like. Especially in a fully rendered piece like this. piece like this, the little details of the shine on the bottles and the shine and the texture of her shawl are all important to making the piece look finished. You can see here as I'm working that I'm also remembering things like bounced light, which is also another thing in helping a piece look grounded in the environment, because light doesn't just hit a surface and stay there. Depending on the surface, it may be completely sucked in, or it may bounce off and produce light touching a different part of the subject's body. 
but it's like touching a different part of the subject. At this point, I'm going in and adding the highlights now. And since I chose a cool color for my shadows, I'm going in with a warm color for my highlights. This is a very important thing to note whenever you're working because if your light is cool, your shadows will be warm. If your light is warm, your shadows will be cool. It helps to add a level of realism to your piece. And it also makes it a little more visually interesting. also gave me the ability to add texture to things like her, like her shawl, like the feathers. And once again, it's one of those things that helps make the piece look more grounded in the background. You can see there I'm adjusting the layers so things look a little more realistic. And then I added a layer of light blue shadow or light blue highlights to like the glass bottles, the characters and the characters' eyes, because those things are going to reflect the blue of the sky. I also went in and added some deeper shadows and some brighter highlights at this point too. there. Little things like this can really help to breathe life into your piece as well. At this stage I'm doing a little more to ground her in her environment and adding some shading to the foreground. The very last thing, of course, is adding the signature because that's the most important part. Thank you so much for watching this video of my little concept art of Rhea and the Phoenix. I hope you really enjoyed it and I hope if you like this video that you will comment, like, and subscribe and also share with a friend maybe.